Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I will go on with a theme of uh, groundwater flooding. And um, we heard it in the discussion, you're absolutely right uh, about the long-term changes. Uh, they will have an uh, effect, and we know that from Germany. Um, I will go on in my presentation also with the short-term effects. Um, so groundwater flooding uh, can have many reasons. Um, so if we have a, a settlement close to a river, we can have the uh, river flood, um, which increase the groundwater levels close to the river. We can have also precipitation, a storm event. And then we have other effects like land use changes, uh, server refurbishments, or also new buildings uh, with uh, deep grounding basements and uh, a more sealing of the surfaces. So our question was uh, how these different changes uh, change our groundwater system. And for that, I would like to uh, introduce uh, three different kind of case stories with uh, different topics. Um, there's one is a small village in Bavaria. Uh, then we have uh, the changes between groundwater levels and uh, server ceilings. Um, and at last, we have a case story of a, a town in uh, Saxony-Anhalt. It's called Schoenbeck. And uh, I will start with the village of Tachating in Bavaria. So we see there's a river located um, with a wire. And uh, some years ago, uh, they push the pounded water some centimeters more to have more uh, energy. And um, maybe you see it in this area. Um, there is an old river branch, which is now closed. And so we had many different kinds of uh, problems uh, there or changes there. Um, a a several refurbishment was also done. And then in 2013, we get a heavy storm rainfall event. And uh, we had many problems with floodings and groundwater uh, heads rising. And so the question was, uh, how, wha wha what is affecting the groundwater floods mostly, the rainfall or the river flood? That was one of the major questions. And are there solutions to, uh, to reduce this in future? Um, the first of all um, was the dialogue with the uh, inhabitants there, uh, they were very frustrated because uh, they settled 50 years ago and uh, in an area which is normally a floodplain that was um, a problem, historic, and um, then we they were not uh, amused about the flooding, so we tried to make a dialogue with them, not against them, and so we uh, sent some questionnaires to ask them uh, how was the flooding at your building, uh, was your basement flooded? How is your basement constructed? And we did um, uh, side visits with the inhabitants to see how did they uh, think the system is acting. That was later important um, because we, from this uh, dialogue, we get some uh, maps uh, about the damages and also, for example, the basement depths, uh, which are important information for our model. Uh, and for the later verification. Um, we use the uh, software Mike Shi. Uh, we heard in the session a lot of, uh, about Mike Shi because we had an overland flow uh, during the flood and we have the groundwater system, so we decide to model this process uh, integrated. Um, and also, uh, we in the beginning of the project, we were thinking about a coupling with uh, the urban model Mike Arm, but uh, as the project started, we had no much information about the server system, so we only uh, used MIC-11 coupling for the river system. This is the project area. Uh, it has a catchment area of around about 15 square kilometer. Uh, we have here uh, the river running. Um, this is the river Alts, and you see also the gouging stations there. Um, the calibration was done at uh, 21 uh, gouging stations and we did the calibration for the flood event in uh, early summer 2013 um, because uh, this was the only flood event where we could calibrate our model. Um, and that was this uh, event where we are interested in. 
we uh, calibrated the hydraulic conductivity, porosity, and the river leakage. And then we did also a verification because of the short calibration time series. Uh, we used the information from the inhabitants uh, and their information about the floodings in the basement. And you see uh, the black line is the bottom of the basement and the red line is the water level, which uh, was uh, answered by the inhabitants. And then we have the green line of the calibrated water levels. This is only a verification. You can't do this exactly, but uh, we get a good uh, feedback from the inhabitants that they're thinking, yeah, okay, that was the time period and that was the water level that fits very well. Um, so now uh, you see the, uh, one of the results is um, the changes of the head. So normally that should be an animation, but I think it's not running. So what we did with Mike Shears uh, that we modeled uh, the overland flow and uh, the saturated or the unsaturated zone and the saturated zone integrated so we can visualize all results. And this was very important for the uh, information which is uh, responsible for the flooding. And on this figure, you see that we used uh, different uh, precipitation events and different uh, uh, river floods from dry weather until uh, 100 yearly extreme events. And you see, for example, on the left figure, uh, the um, flooded area, um, which is increasing by the different events, uh, and also the flood volume on the right side. Interesting is that uh, if you have a 100 yearly flood event in the river, the damage will be uh, neglectable. And also, if we have a 100 yearly precipitation event, only if both comes together, then we get the high damages. And that was a very uh, good information for uh, the starting of the uh, solutions, how to prevent the village for flood events. So uh, when we checked the history map, uh, we see that there was a river running where nowadays the settlement is. Um, so as they built the settlement in the floodplains, uh, they, uh, there was a small uh, river running. Uh, it was called Mitterbach. And this is nowadays completely closed. It's dry. So the easiest way is to uh, build this uh, river again. And we did this. We, uh, we can't build it in the direct line of the village, but we put it on the uh, right side. And uh, it was nowadays it's connected with a small siphon, which is too uh, limited. So we planned a new pumping station, and that with this we can reduce uh, the effect of high groundwater levels during these extreme events very well. We did the same for another village uh, down there. That's the reason why you see two different systems, and this was one result. Um, now I come to another topic, uh, the interactions between groundwater and uh, uh, server systems. Uh, this only happens if your server system is uh, under the groundwater levels. And so we had a project uh, where we tried to find out uh, what is uh, happened uh, if we do server ceilings, how is the groundwater level changing, and uh, what kind of damages can happen. And for this, uh, we analyze the system. So first of all, we have a leaking server system. Uh, then uh, we start, uh, or this starts uh, to lower the groundwater levels. This will be the effect. Uh, the next is that we have man-made groundwater levels. that uh, They are not naturally anymore. And the consequences of this can be that we have uh, degradation of vegetations or subsidence, or the most damages which happen that we have no uh, damages which are visible. And this happened very often. And then we take uh, the time in account and we start to accept this man-made groundwater levels as uh, natural. And we start to build new settlements or changing the settlements with this groundwater levels. And then later, uh, we start with our server ceilings and we come back to the uh, natural groundwater levels and we have an increasing of groundwater levels. And then we come to that point uh, that we have damages like uh, 
flooding, moisture, basements, and all of the things. And this was the effects which we tried to analyze. And for this, uh, we uh, looked for a small uh, case stu study in essen Carnap in Germany, uh, where we tried to find out the interactions between server ceilings in a city area. So we have uh, four parallel server ceilings, uh, server systems, and they were all leakage. And then we analyzed which server system can we uh, seal and what will be the effect and how are they interacting. Um, we used a fee flow for this as a vertical model. You see here the basements and the uh, ceilings. And the top line is if we start to seal everything, the basement are nearly all uh, in, in the groundwater. And uh, the gray line down, this is the actual state because uh, they are all leaking. And the optimum solution was uh, in the scenario, the solution that we can start uh, with a ceiling in the uh, server systems A, B, and D. But at C, if we make a ceiling there, then we will flood all the basements. So that was a very important information because the city could start to uh, with the server ceilings, but uh, for the system C, they had to build a drainage system to prevent these buildings from flooding. Okay, finally, uh, there is another case story of the city Schönebeck, uh, where we had also uh, groundwater flood problems. Um, Schönebeck is located at the Elbe River, and uh, this city has also uh, some changes in the history. So they changed their drinking water supply, uh, there were less inhabitants, so they reduced their water extraction, and then uh, they have problems with melting snow in the uh, late winter time when the snow starts to melt in the floodplains. You see it there on the image. And they also uh, make several ceilings in the city which had an effect on the uh, changing groundwater levels. So for this, uh, we used also the model fee flow, and we covered this with Arc ECMO uh, to model the unsaturated zone. That was the reason that this model was still there. So we developed a, um, a coupling, uh, which is called IFM Arc ECMO, to uh, model these effects with the unsaturated zone together. Um, this is the model setup, and uh, there you see that there's a, a small uh, Extraction river is planned. Uh, to that we come later. This is one of the ideas how to prevent the city for high uh, water levels. Um, you see it. Uh, we planned two different uh, measures uh, to reduce the groundwater level in the city area. The first was uh, to build three wells uh, to lower the groundwater levels, and the other was an uh, river running around the village where we could also um, lower the groundwater levels. So this project was in 2012, and in 2014 we came back to this project. Um, and the question was there, can we combine different measures? And there are some quarry lakes in the south of the area, and the idea was if we lower the water levels from the lakes, did this have an also an effect uh, to the groundwater levels? And for this, uh, we extended our model with the Mike 11 coupling to model all the uh, river branches in this area and in the lakes. Uh, and the, uh, there you see the setup. There is uh, now the coupling with Mike 11, and here we have a uh, view to the lake system. And uh, the result shows um, that we have in our coupled model now the integration of the river system. So we see here the groundwater is changing, and you see very well at this uh, drainage branch uh, how the water is extracted to this river branch. So then we combine the different measures. So you see there on the uh, southwestern south area, the, uh, um, the um, quarry lakes, uh, the effect of them by lowering the water levels. And then we have a combination with uh, one extraction well and the drainage trench. Uh, so we could uh, build a uh, better solution for the city of Schönebeck. 
So I come to my conclusion. Um, so the groundwater floods can be affected by different sources, and uh, it's very important that we look which source has the most uh, important effect on the groundwater floods. Uh, with an integrated modeling, we can analyze these driving effects. We can use Mark Xi, or we can use uh, a fee flow with uh, different couplings. And we know that the leaking server system can interact with the groundwater strongly. And that brings us to the point, if we plan server ceilings, we should uh, observe our groundwater levels in this area to see how is the groundwater system acting. So I'm in time, so I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And, uh